Sally reminded me today's Christmas, and I said, so what, what time's the drink? Seven? No, no. We're opening president, uh, presidents. We're opening presents and all this shit, and, uh, and you got to end early. And you got to give guys time to, uh, if they want to talk to their families, and, you know, I was just making a speech off my soapbox in the, um, in the um, pub dining room, whatever it's called, and um, to, um, to Punjab. And the, um, it's irreversible. The damage has been done by human race. No, I'm not talking about ecological horseshit, because I don't give a fuck. That's all horseshit. It's irreversible. There is no, there is no reversal. It's like we're in the seventh stage of cancer. And there's only four stages, you know? But I, I, we ought to make hay while the sun shines, do, you know? And if you're single, just rape, pillage, and plunder, and debauch, and shit, and, you know, and, and try not to spread fucking AIDS. I mean, just because there is no coming back, Rose. I mean, this is it. The world is over. It's fucking over. And the. Um, but at least we're going to go out with Trump with a, ba with a fucking financial bang. All the good uh, goody tissues on the YouTube that want to save the world, you might as well blow your fucking brains out. At least you'll see some results right away. Boom! As the top of your head goes flattened up against, you know. But it couldn't be more perfect for us. And... As I said, you know who's behind Bitcoin? Putin. It's a Ruski conspiracy to fuck up the American economy and the world. It's a long range plan he started seven, eight years ago. He's going to see the demise of the Western financial world while he's still the head of Russia. He's going to, live, he's going to be there long enough. And he's, and, he's, and he's already hacked into the brains of all the morons. You, YouTubers. Sally said, we got to let them go early so they can do what? To tell their kids that the world's over? To say, Merry Christmas, you stupid shits? I mean, <laughs> there is no fucking Santa Claus? <laughs> Now, one of the things that my parents did that differentiated me when they, they were raising me is, you know, they, the, the Spock doctor book and that stuff. But I believed in Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, and that kind of stuff till I was a lot older than all the other kids. I mean, they let that dream. I mean, I got in a lot of fist fights. Now, fortunately, I was the biggest kid on the school grounds. So, but I mean, a lot of, you know, they'd say, yeah. Uh, Stuff about, you know, your dad being Santa Claus. Nah, I, yeah, it used to hurt my feelings. It hurt me. And so I'd punch him. But uh, if I hadn't been the biggest kid in the schoolyard, I'm not sure uh, if uh, my parents would have let that um, dream. Um, but self-esteem is built the first seven years, remember? Seven, eight years. And obviously, most kids, seven, eight, six, seven, eight years old, six, seven anyway, still believe in all that good stuff. Um, and I sure as hell did longer than that. And um, but that's and you know you, 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 we sh we show the happy smiles and faces of the kids, and unless the kids weren't a nap, he's happy. Even Graham was happy back when he was five or six, I'm sure, you know. And then uh, the, the reality of being here in Scotland caught up with him as he grew up. And I, I tell Andrew Carnegie. No, ma no matter what story you believe, whether he left uh, uh, living with rats in the hull of a, uh, of, uh, of a ship when he was seven or eight, or he left when he was 11 or 12 with his father, who was a joiner or something, and they went to the New World, he left, you know, the, um, whatever story, I like the one when he was, uh, he, he stowed away on a ship, which apparently isn't true, but I like that story anyway. It's, it, makes, it makes better copy. It makes, you know, better news. I I'm a believer in fake news if it works.
<laughs> I'm believing fake news if it works. But I mean, kids, and uh, now I've got a, a granddaughter who uh, Sally reminded me where I'll, I'm going to be talking to um, this, this evening on a Skype call or whatever. Now, I know the little girl, little thing, darling. I mean, she doesn't know who the fuck I am. I, I rather doubt she knows. Uh, she's just at the stage, she'll be two in January or February, and where, you know, mama, dada, and that kind of stuff. And, but uh, interesting, we gave her a, a toy when she was about 10 months old, and it was um, uh, a frog. And, uh, you know, she choked that frog until it didn't have a <coughs> neck left, you know. And every place she went, she would drug it around. I just, so I'm going to remind her of that as she gets older about kissing frogs. Don't sleep with the frog, just kiss him, honey. <laughs> I mean, we don't want you sleeping with the frogs. But um, the, um, during this time, it's, you know, I've gotten some uh, mercy uh, fuck emails. I uh, can't get a hold of this guy. What do I do? And uh, whether it's still have aspirations of getting something closed between now and year end. And Europe is tough. It's not, it's not impossible to get stuff closed in the United States. But I mean, if it didn't start by now, it's sure as fuck not going to end this year. It's just a lot of places, as you probably know better than I, don't even pick up the phone. Or it's on answering machine, or it's on something. And um, the um, but the guys that were driving hard to get their fees and commissions in this calendar year will be hard to get a hold of after the first of the year, because they will have either gotten their fees, commissions, bonuses earned, and so then they go back to sleep like normal, <laughs> uh, or they're pissed off and they're not earned. And they realize that nobody's going to be available to do business. But um, 2018 is going to be a, a, a banner, banner year. I mean, uh, you know, this last year for me as a person for investments, money, um, getting deals done, you guys, it is arguably um, the best one 12 month period that we've had. Uh, and um, because now, would we have gotten as much accomplished if I wasn't jumping up and down about the Trump train? We probably would have still got a lot accomplished, but now I'm jumping up and down about the Trump train, and whether you're going to get on it or not, and what are you going to tell your kids and your grandkids about the greatest transformation of wealth? And every time the, the financial, every time the, the interest rates aren't going up, every time there's not a, a black swan event, the black swan event, the meteor hitting us or something, I mean, it just increases the probabilities of of um, being able to finance these deals. Now, now, and I told you earlier, a couple of days ago, when everybody and the bankers and, you know, the, uh, well, the bankers are already calling, uh, at least one of you, uh, we, we, to take our money. When all of you are getting called by the bankers, take our money, that's the end. When all, you know, when it's 100%. But even now, I mean, you've got um, Uber drivers, giving you uh, uh, Bitcoin tips and I mean um, and uh, everybody everybody you know and Bitcoin is is, is a thing that is taken um, uh, not the, uh, the world by storm but uh, you could argue that but it's something that everybody can relate to because it started at a penny or wherever it started and now look at it and even with a setback here in the last few days I mean it's something that um, everybody knows somebody that owns Bitcoin and most of the people that own Bitcoins wish they owned more. And some of the people that don't own Bitcoins, you know, have got to come up with some uh, justification why they don't own Bitcoins. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't own any. I'm not, I'm not going to get any Bitcoins. Um, but um, the, uh, I'm not a, 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 um, the typical guy that needs to get rich off of Bitcoins. See, I wanted to go to a billion dollars because then there would be a lot of wealth distributed to mostly poor people. And that's good for us. Because people knew wealth and their money and the people are easily separated. There's a reason why when you win the lottery, 100 million or 50 million, four years later they're broke. So I'm looking for all those Bitcoin guys to have a lot of money because I'm going to help separate that money from them. <laughs> And you're gonna separate the money from them. If you go broke in my deal. Well, that was, oh, no, 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 take, no, no. Take their, in a legitimate, professional, honest, ethical, moral way, but take their money and, you know, fund your deals. 
because most of the people that have made huge uh, capital gains in Bitcoin don't know anything about investment. They don't. They're techie people that understand why it works and you know, how it should work forever, but they don't understand the fundamentals of finance. And they're going to learn the hard way. As they start to cash in Bitcoins and make investments, then their history of an investment portfolio will begin. And I just soon have them begin it with us. You. Again, I'm, I don't want any deals. Don't, please, Bitcoin people, don't, don't contact me. Don't. <coughs> But why not? You know, somebody's made, you know, like the Winklehouse twins that were an exception of the first billionaires, supposedly, uh, no, the first billionaires they're talking about making a billion. I, I hear they invested 10, 11 million bucks and their values are up to a billion. Is, is that the, isn't that the story? Something like that, right? Well, I, I'm sure if they're the, talking about it, there are other people that have, been, that have made uh, a, a lot of money. Now, the, wink of the twins, those guys are uh, sophisticated guys, so it's not likely you'd be separating their money from them. But, I mean, there's a plenty of other people that have probably made tens of millions, hundreds of millions, that are going to need investments, you know, under the theory that you should spread your risk. I'm not one of those people that believes in spreading your risk, but, I mean, most people do. If you've got $100 million in Bitcoin value, um, they're probably going to be looking to cash some of that in. And I told a couple of people that I know that have made quite a bit of money, sell half, keep half. And keep half, when it goes to a trillion, sell half so you can change your lifestyle now. Sell half, keep half. And that's the general, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not an investment advisor, I don't have any of the series 7, 10, 11, 14 licenses, so it's, it's not advice, uh, uh, this is independent free advice, take it for what it's worth. Uh, but uh, my advice when you make big, big chunk of money like that is sell half, keep half. And, um, and I know at least one of the individuals I told uh, followed my advice. Um, because uh, the half will change their life forever. And the other half, and if it works out and Bitcoin goes to a million dollars a coin, well then I'll be with you. I'll be with you. But at some juncture, people are going to start, you know, using that money to change their lives. Because if you have a, a trillion dollars in Bitcoin and you're not using it to spend or buy anything, you got a trillion dollars in Bitcoins. And, um, and I would imagine that uh, they're going to just, I don't know why the guy eliminated his portfolio a few days ago. I don't, I, I don't know the, any of the history behind that. Um, but um, sell half, keep half. And in anything that you make a lot of money in, that's normally my advice. Sell half, keep half. And that, you, you, you change your life. Now, when you, when, you got, when, you got, when you own and control the majority of the slum, landlord, slum lettings in Scotland, like somebody in this room does, I mean, he, he couldn't give half away, let alone sell half. But, uh, the, uh, but uh, any questions? Are you, are you stretching? Oh, you, do you have an Aussie type question? Okay. Yes, sir. So, in terms of um, the, the, the Hungarian deal that was just showed, if um, we can agree for the seller to put a seller's note in, that's fine. But the bank actually comes in and says, actually, we need to see that you're putting some cash in. Could we do a deal where we sort of. This is back to the owner finance. Yeah. Okay. So, it, to, to satisfy the banks, if the bulk of the banks will only finance the cash in, Maybe I can get a, a second investor on board to put the money in, let's say 30%. When that 30% goes into the, the 30 plus the 70 goes to the seller, could I have an agreement for the seller to invest that 30% back? Sure, sure you could. Yeah, but I mean. Or is that not on trust, or can you actually tie them up in an agreement before you actually. Execute? Well, you can, but in his particular case, his investor wants all the information. Okay. So if, if the investor goes along with it, fine. If he doesn't go along with it, but in some of the loan documents that you guys have executed and will execute, uh, the bank is going to have to be informed. Absolutely has to be informed. Some banking financial instruments, they have first right of refusal. <coughs> and a real hot market, I've seen real hot markets where the bank says, before you do go and do something, Graham, we want to be notified. Now, it may be just verbally, we want to be notified, so you know, maybe he forgot, he had a hangover, but if it's written, we want to be notified, you better bloody well notify him. 
Otherwise, the, you know, they can, they can uh, call your loan. Like I say, most of you guys have never had a loan other than when you were in default called. You all think that you can't have a loan called unless you're in default. And normally you think one, two, three missed payments and they send you a letter and they go through, you know, then you get a, a, a letter in a red envelope or some bullshit. And then, you know, you got 90 days to cure it, meaning fix it. Well, that's the Marcus of Queensberry way, but you can get a fucking loan called with just them calling it, and then you get a letter after the fact. Red Zone, uh, and, and, uh, after the Christmas holidays, it would be opening, I don't know if you open your own mail, or whoever's opened the mail, and they open the, and they, they call the loan. And, and you're not even in default. Didn't you say that in, uh, in the UK, if you are behind, at least two, um, say from bank, and I know, your supplier of any Oh. Two people can put, or in Scotland, two people can put you into a receivership in Scotland. You have two people. Two people can put you into, into receivership. Unrelated parties. Yeah, unrelated yeah. two. Just two. You know, some, I mean, uh, uh, 5,000 pounds and uh, 1,100 pounds. Two people can put you into receivership. Credit. Yeah, credit. Bankruptcy. And then there's different, and you don't want to understand the different forms of bankruptcy. Unfortunately, I, I've taken a big, big company into bankruptcy, protection of the bankruptcy laws, and I've taken it out. Uh, but uh, there's liquidation, there's reorg reorganization. In different countries, they call them different numbers. In America, it's uh, chapter uh, 7 and 13, I think. Um, uh, but it has really, in, in all countries, not all, I, I don't know about Russia, but I mean, or Hungary, but, uh, but uh, you have, um, you can't have credit cards, bunch of other things you can't have. You're, you're struck from, uh, you can't be on board of directors, can't be a director for seven years. Uh, some countries it's a little different, but you don't want to go through all that bullshit. Although, a couple of people up on the hall have been through bankruptcy. And they come back, you know, and uh, I just, because the stigma, and they say you come back stronger, smarter, and that's all horse shit. That's a, a rationale, you know, uh, because they went into bankruptcy. But, you know, you, you don't have to go to, ban you know, you don't want to go through bankruptcy if you can at all avoid it. And then you, want to, you don't want a liquidation uh, if you, you want a reorganization. People seem to, the stigma of a reorg isn't as bad, excuse me, as a liquidation. I mean, reorg, Bill, he, he went through a reorg. He, they don't even associate it with bankruptcy. He went through a reorg. Now, I know what that means. Yeah, you know, and uh, the um, yeah, no, there's voluntary reorgs, but not all reorgs. The bank will say, okay, you got you can you got two choices here, you know, we push you in or you volunteer, you know, but yeah, so um, well, and they always whether it was voluntary or not, you say it's voluntary instead of involuntary, or you just leave the end, you can't hear the end part. <laughs> You know, the bottom line is that the bank gave you uh, an option, and that's only if they can see a clear path from you getting out of voluntary um, reorg uh, to come out. And uh, there's uh, all kinds of things like debtor in possession, and I mean, it's a whole structure. It's, and, and it, but the, the, the worst thing about it is it's normally very expensive. They don't tell you about that part. I mean, you could pay. Anywhere from 20 to 30 points percent, uh, percent of what the debt is just in fees. Again, the banks, you know, they don't make enough money just loaning the money out 20, 30, 40 times. They've developed all these other ancillary businesses uh, for them to um, collect money on fees. Okay, see you later. Uh, Merry Christmas and go fuck yourself, YouTube. <laughs>